hot sauce, tool, candy bar, rectal prolapse. Yes, we Hello! This is the new intro. 79 bottles of beer on the wall. Hmm? 79 bottles of beer. 79. Drink went down. Made it. Press it around and next week it'll be 80 and we'll feel more special. <laughs> yeah, know, 80, like 80 has a stronger ring to it. <laughs> it does. It does have a stronger ring to it. Uh, episode 79 of Is Me Dumb. My name is Joe Paisley. I'm Dan Cummins. And Dan Cummins does comedy stuff and you have uh, uh, some busy stuff going on. That's right. Heading I, uh, out on the road and doing the things out there. I had some fun, uh, a lot of fun in uh, San Diego mm-hmm. and in uh, West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I guess La Jolla specifically in San Diego. But, and then, uh, yeah, coming up uh, Orlando, Atlanta, a whole bunch of places. What's the weird La Jolla Pacific Beach? That's the weird spot. Or, I, I mean, weird by, as in like really fun to just kind of sit around and people watch. Isn't that, I, is that or, real? Or like Pismo Beach? Uh, uh, maybe. Pacific Beach. I, I, I don't know. There's so many little towns along the <laughs> coast there so that many. I lose track of them. Okay. Like last time we were in that kind of area, we were more north, like Huntington Beach. But um, mm-hmm. La Jolla, I mean, La Jolla was a randomly uh, a connection to where I grew up. Like, you know, I grew up in Riggins, Idaho. McCall, Idaho is 45 mm-hmm. miles away. And uh, some lady at this coffee shop started like, hey, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Coeur d'Alene. Oh, brought up McCall. And there's like this weird La Jolla-McCall connection right. where apparently a lot of the rich people in uh, La Jolla like to uh, go up to McCall for like the summers and stuff. And I'm <laughs> sure. like, man, what a... I mean, two beautiful places. Mm-hmm. What a nice life. <laughs> what a terrible thing. La Jolla is, yeah, it's gorgeous. God, I hope my I hope my other house that I have in McCall is clean. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Oh, yeah. And I uh, and I will have a funny story about my first night in La Jolla mm-hmm. here soon. Yeah, but, I can't uh, wait. Some, some residents, I'm sure, <laughs> saw me in a very altered state. We'll Got cover, real weird. We'll cover that with the is we dumb. And, and, the, and the stand-up, you can go to dancummins.tv. And, okay. and some of the markets have been insane. I just want to say a quick thank you to uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, the ticket sales were so fast there that I genuinely thought it was a mistake. And uh, and checked in with the club owner. I'm like, uh, hey, man, I think your website's not working. <laughs> it looks broken. Do you guys yeah. have four tickets on sale? <laughs> <laughs> but, who? yeah, the the oh, my God. Salt Lake City, it's like the show's just sold out immediately, basically. That's, well, okay. so, so that's fun. Well, rightfully so. So that's the only city I'm going to go to now. <laughs> right. I'm just going to do a Strictly residency. Salt Lake. I'm going to do a residency in Salt Lake City. My next special my next special's there. Mm-hmm. Special after that. <laughs> special after that. <laughs> Until you guys kick me out. That'd be so, I, I would love the randomness of that. So where do you go on tour? Salt Lake City? Like, where else? <laughs> no, just Salt Lake City. That's it. I, spend, I, I do a six-month residency are in you Salt from Lake City. No. No, I just, I love it. And they love me and that's all, that's all there's to it. So you're not from there. Do you live there? No. no. Of course I don't. I mean, kind of now. Six <laughs> right. months out of the year. Sure. I do a residency in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Well, good for you. It's, it's the new, it's a, uh, so Reno is the smaller Vegas. <laughs> Salt Lake City is now. It's a smaller Reno. Smaller Reno. It's, it's like <laughs> Reno, but like just for me. There's like one casino that they somehow punch in downtown. Dan Vegas. And just, you're Dan Vegas. Danny it's Vegas. A, it's a small casino with one showroom and I'm like their share. And I'm a bunch like, of, hey, legally, Celine Dion. there's a bunch of slot machines, but it's just pictures of them. <laughs> you can't actually play them. But it, it's fun to think about. Uh, it's like one of those baby, like at the playground, we get to spin the little wheels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like that. I love so that you a get, fake casino. <laughs> right. Just to draw people in. You just, you just, it's like they actually have the slot machines, but instead of like winning any money, it's just like, good job. <laughs> you did great, buddy. Right. Just affirmations. They turn it into like a, a claw machine. Like you're winning <laughs> little stuffed animals and bouncy oh balls. Oh my God, and bouncy balls some and candy. fucking sticky hands and shit. Just the little plastic bubbles. Just like. <laughs> Play pop, until pop. you win. It's a Tootsie Pop. <laughs> that's, a, I'm, that's the Vegas I want. That sounds like that's fun. fun. It's a fun, low pressure Vegas. Let's do it. Let's, uh, come on, right. just do it. Just let, let's just start it. If you want the lights of Vegas, but none of the excitement and danger, and go to bed early, and go to bed early, <laughs> and you don't have to worry about you know I don't know STDs, STDs and stuff. <laughs> Lose, you don't have to worry about divorce. Yeah, right. Losing all your money, then you go to Salt Lake City, the, the Dan Vegas <laughs> Casino. Something tells me there's some darker shit going on in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City. There has to be. Oh, there's an underbelly that's real. Oh, for sure there, there is. And I think that's the only reason I'm able to do shows. There. <laughs> that's why your career is taking off. Uh, so, is Salt, the underbelly of society. Salt Lake City, <laughs> I would say, much like Boise, is so much cooler than people think. Like mm-hmm. people who never go, they have this image in their mind. And they have like, people have a weird image in my mind too of just um, Mormon culture in general. Mm-hmm. They have it confused with like 19th century, like, hello, uh, Zebediah. <laughs> you know, it's like, how is the missus? Little Prairie on the Hill. Right, right. Like Little Prairie mixed with like like fucking leave it to beaver it's like yeah like 
there's a lot of people who won't swear and stuff, but at least for me, I don't really notice it because they're just, they're wearing the same shit. They they watch the same shows <laughs> and th yeah, they have like a, a, a different, you know, like spiritual life, but they're not, in my experience, talking about it, pushing out anybody's right. throat. And, it, and it's a, and it's a cool city. It's like um, very outdoorsy, but also tons of tattoo shops. Um, you know, it's not like a big, a huge nightlife scene compared to other cities its size, yeah. but there is one. Yeah, it's it's a cool city. I love the pun of not pushing anything down anyone's throat. Because <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Strictly for babies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Uh, I think I think the Bengals. I think it's their destiny this I year. I think the Rams are going to win. I want the Bengals to win. But you think that, yeah, the Rams are favored by what? Three and a half points, I think, is the Vegas spread. Mm. Uh, I want the Bengals to win only because Kyler loves the Bengals. They sucked so bad last year. And then came out of nowhere to make it to the playoffs. And then go all the way to the Super Bowl. And there's this random uh, uh, nostalgia situation here for me where when I was his age, mm -hmm. a little bit younger, he's 16. When I was more like 13, 12, 13, that was the last time the Bengals were good. And they had Icky Boomer Sison, they had Icky Woods, and I was into them. I had a jacket and everything for like two years. Stopped caring about him after that. Yeah. And now it's just crazy to see like him, his team have this success. That's just So maybe they'll actually win this time. I think there's also some... Uh, I, th there's some sadness in there. Yeah, looking at like what the 31 years it was right before they got the playoff win. Right, Ohio as a state, fuck me, man. Oh, yeah. Outside the Buckeyes, between the Browns and the Bengals, Browns, Indians, fucking yeah. Cavs. I mean, if you took took away the one well, championship with LeBron, right, that's a giant drought of yeah. probably yeah. 30 years. Indians almost had it. They've been good a couple of times. I believe the last time they they blew, they're the first team to blow a 3-0 lead. Against the Red Sox, uh, like back in like uh, 05 or 06. Oh, that's like the Albert Bell years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then they've gotten close. Uh, right. Some, but like, yeah, the whole state. So let's get a fucking, let's just bring it home. Come on. I mean, us being Browns fans, they just bring it to the state. Yeah, and because, that's great for that for everybody. Because the state hasn't, I don't think, won a Super Bowl. I don't even think it was called the Super Bowl. No. Last time the Browns won. Nope. It was like the championship game. Yeah, it was not the Super Bowl yet. I think it was like, never won it was when Bowl. Jim Brown was a running back, mm -hmm. and I think he was a running back in the 50s. <laughs> or maybe early 60s. Maybe, I think early 60s. Okay, so early 60s is the most recent, and then the Bengals, this will be their third appearance, but they never have won. Mm -hmm. Boomer Sison and Icky Woods made it twice, lost both times to uh, Joe Montana at least one time. Makes sense. And, uh, and, I, and I might have been both times. Oh, might have been the 49ers both times. That's why I didn't want the 49ers to win, because I'm like, no. Because then the, then it's like a fucking back to the 80s, and they're doomed. <laughs> right. They had no just, chance. This is the back of the future. It's a it's a simulation mm -hmm. at that point. Okay. Do you remember, do you remember the icky wood shovel? The icky shovel? No. Do you want to? You just. You, I, I can do it from my chair. Okay. It's it just like you just. It's. Uh, I can't remember if you start right or left, but like you have the football. Let's say it's in your left hand, and you just go. Okay. Ba 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 ba. Oh, kind of. And then switch with the hands. Ba 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 ba. And then you do it again. Da da yeah. da da. And then you spike it, and that's okay, it. That's that's the whole. And you, get, and you get a little bit of footwork there. It or, it kind of reminds me. Of, I've I've seen it plenty of times. Yeah. From other players doing it. Right. It reminds me of like Peter Pan, like a kind of a Peter Pan kind of fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a, a little slow, a little, you know, obviously choreographed, but just like, ah, ah, ja, yeah. and then, ha, and like just doing weird I, <laughs> calculated steps towards each other. I love, I love, right. <laughs> I love that it's held on because it's not that good of a touchdown celebration. <laughs> like it's not a really cool little sequence of moves. I mean, a and he wasn't that good for very long. <laughs> And there's been like like people have way more um, choreographed celebrations now, yeah. like since then. But for some reason, that stuck. <laughs> and I think I think he was only do. a dominant back for like maybe two seasons. <laughs> well, and but, came, if TikTok was around, oh yeah, back then he would have been a lot bigger. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he would have been making a lot of money off that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got that out of the way. Uh, did I say dumb dumb idiots listener edition on today's show yet? Uh, I'm not no, sure if I did. No. Okay, well we're doing that on today's show. Before we get to that, we're going to get our juices uh, flowing with our brain parts. With the very super most important starting question. Let's do it. Let's do it. The very super most important starting question. All right. So this is a combo between Todd and Jason. Okay. Are you ready for this? I am. Would you rather <laughs> talk yourself through every daily task like a golf commentator? Okay. Or every time you have an, an, an inappropriate thought. A candy bar appears in your pants, and you have to give it away. And you have to give it away. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, talk, you, talk yourself through every daily task. Well, you know what, though? Going back for a, oh, second, for a second whiskey and Coke. Not sure if that's good for him at 11 o'clock at night. I have so many inappropriate uh, thoughts. Like, I, I feel like it's truly, what do they call it? Uh, not that I have, like, a think that I have an actual syndrome, but, like, intrusive oh, male. thoughts. Male. 
You're a male. I'm a male. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm a dude. <laughs> so, so you're many, a guy. I'm a guy. I've <laughs> constantly, but I'm constantly. Can relate. I can relate. Okay. So my brain is saturated <laughs> with inappropriate thoughts. Like for yes. every horrible thought that I say verbally, there's a good, I don't know, 40 to 50 Hundred? thoughts. <laughs> yeah, just hundreds of them in my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a silly movie. I'd be giving out so many candy bars. Which is fun. And I mean, that's thoughtful. Right. But people, I mean, if they're uh, either on a diet, yeah. not going to be a fan of being around you. Right. And right. also, if you're trying to keep it um, <laughs> in a place where you, you're not allowed, you're, you're at a fucking funeral yeah. or like a high school band practice where you you don't want some fucking candy bars to be given away. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Because <laughs> they're going to like, what kind of thoughts were inappropriate? Mm -hmm. what, what are you was thinking about right there? now? What are you going to do to that tuba? <laughs> like, what are you sticking to that tuba right now, Dan? Right. You're like, I don't know. You want an Alban Joy, though? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you later. Here's a butterfinger. Oh man. Um, gosh. I, yeah. I, I think. I think I have to. <sighs> and do you have, I'm gonna to, have to go with the golf commentary? But that's going to be so annoying, so bad because you're commentating. And, and is it you? Wait. Is it you doing it like verbally? Yeah. So are you? You're instead of talking to yourself, right? Talking. Talking to yourself. Like Jesus a, like Christ. A golf commentator. How is that going to happen when you like? How is that going to work when you're having a conversation with somebody? It's not. It's great. Right? It's, it's going to be, be terrible. fucking madness. It's going to be. Yeah, you're going to get locked up. You're going to be like, "Hey, how's it going, Joe? Uh, I just I don't know if that was a uh, uh, Cummins. There went a little too formal with his greeting with his friend. He's known him a long time. That was a weird call to make. But and, like everything you say, <laughs> weird they didn't hug. Weird they didn't hug. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's even weirder that they're not hugging. So <laughs> what are we going to do here? <laughs> just 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 walking by, like, "Hey, man, uh, good, you know, good morning, whatever." And then, uh, Dan. Uh, uh, I wondered, did Joe give him a weird look there? Is he mad at him? What's going on in that situation? Why is uh could be nothing, could be uh Dan's a little bit tired this morning. But just, <laughs> like just this constant stream of consciousness. Is he is he ignoring me because he 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 knows that I'm gonna talk to myself when I walk by. <laughs> he doesn't want to get involved in that. That's fine. I Does understand that. Joe has Joe gotten sick of the uh constant uh, commentary? Is that what's going on here? Let's take he... a look at him. Yep, looks like he has. <laughs> okay, yeah, down back to you, Bill. Quick review, uh mental review. Yes, he does seem to be annoyed by the talking. <laughs> and the talking continues. <laughs> uh, picturing, of course, the golf commentary, if yeah. you take it to bed, is funny. Oh, my God, yes. It's like, you'd, you'd think that he would know where the hole was by now, Jim. Right, right. <laughs> nah, you, nah, I thought so too, Bill. He's, uh, he's going for the one hole, but he's always looking at the back nine. What's that about? <laughs> She's uh, tired of all the uh, insinuations about the, you're like, yeah, just back, back nine's a little muddy. <laughs> So uh, maybe just play the front, th the front tonight, <laughs> and you have to say it all out loud. He's like, "God damn it!" There's just no subtlety, no romance. Right? He's like, "Yeah, I thought the whole one be a little bit easier." She's had multiple kids. Uh, the hole should be bigger, but he still <laughs> can't seem to find it. And Is the, that John Daly? Is he drunk? <laughs> <laughs> and the disconnect. If you're saying stuff like, um, "Oh, maybe I can't believe you got me flowers. You didn't have to do that." Ah, uh, he knows he didn't have to do it, but he really <laughs> wants to fuck you later. And, and, the, and just be like, "No, god damn it! Oh, you just can't give me flowers. Be nice. No, I wasn't just giving you flowers. Be nice. No." No, he wasn't. He once, definitely <laughs> wants some of that pussy. That's once, what he's angling for. Once again, fucked it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I love uh, the idea of uh, having a conversation. Yeah. Uh, I don't care, female or male. Yeah. Like, you're going to have these inappropriate thoughts. Whatever right. it is. Like, I, say I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. And, and, and the inappropriate thought doesn't have to have anything to do with you. Right. Like, I'm talking to you and I'm like, oh, fucking titty fucking. Right. And then at that moment. Candy bar. Whoop. Little Butterfinger slides out of my pants pocket. Does the golf commentary comment on the inappropriate thoughts, though? Because if oh, it the, didn't... They're separate. Those are two separate things. So I wonder, if you're just commentating on what you're doing, and you're not sh revealing your inner monologue, that might be okay. Because that's what I was just doing with my golf voice. I was I was share, sharing the thoughts. The inner monologue. But but, but if that's not being shared, but just if like... If, if we go off of... Let's look at a golf game right now. Yeah. You're, they're not commentating, or commentating on, the, on the thoughts. Right. There's like it's what they're doing. Action, yeah. Right? Yeah. So walking a little slow today. Wow. Still overweight, I see. You know, things <laughs> right. like that. Like the, right. the physical attributes about your performance and the, uh, the daily actions of yourself, like making... So the, like, verb, like, the verbs of your life. I'm mostly talking about yourself in the third person. It's like like you're voicing some random, as, as if some somebody in a booth mm -hmm. was just watching your every move. Right. But you're the one voicing this person watching you. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's a little, it's very schizophrenic. What if there's somebody, you know, I was going to say, what if it's somebody else? But that's not the would you rather. Right. The would you rather is not Morgan Freeman in a golf <laughs> commentator voice. So that's <laughs> that's out. Yeah, like if, you, like if everyone just heard that, that would be like a cool... Thing maybe. Hey, you could turn that into a, in a career. Commons is really trying to <laughs> get to the lunch place a little early today. He's <laughs> quite hungry. He skipped breakfast and he wants to lose weight, but we all know that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> 
Just like some great, like that would be kind of cool. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> like I mean, if other be, people heard it. At least it entertained people. Right, right. It'd freak them out. They probably think you're like a god of some <laughs> right. of some sort of this is the voice right, always right. talking about what you're doing. <laughs> um, yeah, but goddamn, dude, that the the idea of having I don't know why it's it's such a hang up that you have to give it away. Like you don't just like candy bars aren't just appearing in your pants. <laughs> like you have to be like, God damn it. Okay, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. One second. Like I show up into a room and I've had my, my brain has wandered and I just roll in with a like a fucking my my pants are a concession stand. Right. Of just Butterfingers, Almond Joys, Reese's Pieces, Hershey's. <laughs> like all of it. I'm like, hey guys, hey Joe. And like whoosh, throw it out and like, yep. all right, thank you. I'm thinking of the slot machine kind of thing again earlier. <laughs> like when the coins are coming out of a slot machine, ring, 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 ring. When you, it'd be like the, like if you just if I just went into a strip club with the, <laughs> the candy bar, just shooting candy bars. Bing, 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 bing. Just like just candy bars, <laughs> fucking flying everywhere, get kicked out because you're just, you're you're walloping all of the strippers with fucking butterfingers, just like, leaving marks on them and oh shit. My, oh my <laughs> god! Stop it! I can't. If you stayed in the strip club for like an hour, <laughs> it would be there would be a solid two feet of candy bars like just across the floor, like it'd been snowing in there, just the whole time you're in there for the whole hour. Ding 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 ding, shooting fucking so many goddamn candy bars. It's like a ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> a ball like the Chuck E. Cheese ball pit of Reese's Pieces. <laughs> yep. They're like, nah, you can't come. You, you, you can't have you, have you here anymore. I don't know if you. I mean, I'm driving. God, that's distracting. If what I have a, a big road trip, I'm, I'm going to drown in candy bars in my car. What a great business! If you can make these magic candy bars appear, it costs you nothing. <laughs> if you just open up a candy bar, a candy store. Yeah, just okay. You get it. Now. You just open up a candy store, and then like you know, in the morning before, obviously, you open up to the kids. You just watch hardcore porn and just like violent fucking whatever, like create whatever gets your brain having the most complicated thought or the darkest thoughts. <laughs> sure. And then just fucking that gets your stock of candy for the day. Right. And then the rest of the day, it's like nothing but like Disney stuff <laughs> and just very G rated. It's getting, gonna be very filtered. Getting sued by Nabisco, like like where the fuck are you getting these? <laughs> sorry, one second. Ready? What's what's your wife? name ding. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding 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 i'm fucking her right now stop me <laughs> uh, i gotta i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna choose the the candy bars in my pants oh i i don't i can't narrate my own life all the time right and right now, Joe is wondering if Dan agrees with him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna choose narration. I'm just gonna live by myself in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll show up and give you all the candy bars you could ever want. <laughs> Perfect. What's your favorite candy bar? Ooh, uh, favorite candy bar. Mm, well, it's not really a bar. I do like peanut M Ms and Reese's Pieces, but if it's a bar, probably almond joy. Okay. What about you? Um, hold on one second. How do you like that almond joy? Uh, inside you or outside? Inside, there? inside me. Ding 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 ding, ding, ding. go <laughs> in, my, in my mouth. I don't know. I have memories tied to a candy bar that doesn't exist anymore. Score? Remember score? Uh-uh. Oh. It was like a hard taffy candy thing. Do you ever with eat, chocolate all over it? Do you ever eat Idaho Spuds? No, but people have been posting about them because we talked about them a while back. Yeah, that, that's like that's my top one of my top five candy bars. What? Regional. Yeah, it's just a chocolatey marshmallow surrounded yeah. in it, surrounded in a chocolate shell with coconut shavings on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I ate a lot of them as a kid. <laughs> Fine. 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 Fuck those things, though. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just haven't... They don't have a, a tie to them. Okay. I don't know. They're still good. They're fine. I mean, we should, let's get some. We, we know yeah. that they're uh, right there. Mm -hmm. We are maybe... 20 steps away from getting Idaho, Idaho spuds. Spud right down there at the, the gas station. And if you go to the right uh, stores, you can get mini spuds. What? They have get, fucking mini spuds? Yeah, you, I don't know if they're knockoffs or what, because they don't have the right uh, package on them, but I've had them many times. And it's a cheap plastic bag. I think it's probably a, an illegal knockoff <laughs> that they would sell at gas stations. And then you get like, you know, 10, 15 little mini spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Out of all things that there's a Sam's Club version of, I did not think the Idaho, Idaho spud, spud made it. was going to have one where they're like, you know what? Fuck these guys. These things too big. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to throw these things to a grater let's and undercut, shrink them down. Let's undercut this company that has one small factory <laughs> in somewhere in Southern Idaho. Fuck this company that's making 10 grand a year. I <laughs> know <laughs> <laughs> spuds. There's gold in them hills. Uh, okay, so let's move on because I'm excited to hear about what you did down uh, at the Tool concert. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's roll it. Logan! I heard you like shrooms. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I do. Thank I do. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, well, you know, shrooms to me have always been like, uh, uh, they're like a milder hallucinogen, mm -hmm. to, you know, generally. And, um, and I was, so I went a night early with my, uh, another friend named Joe, my, he's, uh, he's my agent, but he's like, he's like my buddy too. We've known each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted, it was a rare thing where we didn't have the kids that week. Lindsay was actually out of town. 
Uh, so I just left town a night early. I was going down to San Diego anyway, and Tool was playing, uh, you know, the night before my first show. And so I got there early afternoon, did a little bit of work, uh, stayed just like two doors down from Joe's hotel room, stayed in the same hotel. And then we did like a couple capsules, which are more for like a micro dosing. They're not that strong. Yeah. You know, like a couple of those, smoked a little bit of weed, um, had a glass of whiskey. We then went to the area, got some food. Uh, and they were playing at like San Diego State University. It was either them or USD. It was either SDSU or USD. I can't remember. I think it was the Aztecs. And they have their stadium there. And then we got in the area after we had some food, feeling fine. And then we just went off before we went to our seats, you know, to a little bench in the shadows. And he does three stems with three caps on them, you know, each. And I've had three caps before and not had my fucking brain explode. <laughs> yeah, me too. Right? I was like, oh, yeah, that'll be fine. Like, yeah. maybe I'll see some stuff. You know, the colors will be extra bright. Textures, I'll touch them. Mm -hmm. Textures, everything will feel good. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the f it was fucking crazy how high I got. <laughs> like, we, we ha ate those mm -hmm. and then just walked in to the, the stadium, got like a beer. And then I just remember, like, I was feeling fine. I was feeling, like, warm and fun like I'm used to with shrooms. Going to use the bathroom. And all of a sudden in the bathroom, I was, like, I was convinced that the person next to me was definitely a woman. <laughs> like, it was, like, very feminine. Like, a lady was pissing in the urinal next to me. And I just remember thinking... Well, that's not real. <laughs> and uh, and so, like, I left. Could have been. been. What, it, just, it was a tiny dick. It was a tiny dick. <laughs> it was a real tiny dick. It was a beautiful tool concert. busy next to me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I uh, washed my hands, and I just walked back to Joe. And before I said anything, he's like, he goes, we need to get to our seats. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And I, and I was he like, knew. Yeah, he knew. So he's, because it's, 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 we took him the exact same time, kicking it for him. You, from his perspective, you walked out and you're a woman. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You're just like a super like flowing, beautiful hair. And uh -huh. You're the woman that walked out of the men's bathroom. You go, we gotta go find our seats. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get out of here. So we start walking towards our seats. Uh, then, uh, and actually, as we're walking towards our seats, a couple fans were, uh, were like, hey, so, you know, like, oh. can we get a picture? And I just remember, no, thinking, no, get away from me. <laughs> but I, but I just, <laughs> slapping them and shit. But I do remember thinking like, thank God you're seeing me not 10 minutes from now. Because <laughs> right. I, I knew that I'm like, this is starting to ramp up. Like mm -hmm. it, it hit us sooner than we thought it would. Like 15 minutes after we ate them, we're already starting to feel Damn, stuff. Damn, that's fast. Yes, yeah, so we're like, what is happening? So then, uh, we'll take a picture, zip in, like find our seats as fast as possible. And already going in, I'm like, fuck, like the stairs look like they're too far. Like I'm having like uh, uh, depth perception uh, issues. And I'm yeah. like, how is this happening so fast? Make it to our seats and uh, sit down. And then within like five minutes, I'm starting to get super high. And, <laughs> and it's like you like that stop motion when I would look at other, they're still seating. Like tool hasn't come on. The opening band's about to come on. And it would look like um, in a nature show. When they do that speed motion, like when they leave a camera somewhere for 12 hours. Yeah. Time it's like lapse. Time lapse. Mm -hmm. Everything was in time lapse. And, and I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Jesus Christ. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And we're not even close to peaking. I'm like, oh, this is fucking scary. <laughs> oh, and, boy. And I just remember thinking like, okay, memorize my seat number. Never leave this seat. And I told Joe, I'm like, dude, I'm not leaving this seat. I'm not going to the bathroom. I'm Fuck like, you. I, I stay here. <laughs> I will piss my pants. I'll I'm sitting I'll, in this oh, yeah. chair. I'll, like, I'll piss my pants. I'm not leaving until we have to go. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then so it starts and it was like my perception of time got all messed up. And then by the time Tool got on, I was so fucked up that like they wouldn't play any song in my brain at a normal rhythm. And their their live show is so visual that it looks weird when you're sober. And I've seen this show sober. Mm -hmm. And so like it looked like I thought it was a fucking weird Lord of the Rings theme for a while. And I thought that Danny Carey, the drummer, in my mind, his lower half of the body was like a woodland like series of roots and things <laughs> and it was like melded into the ground and he had fucking antlers and shit on his head and I'm like man they went all out right. for the costumes wow A plus costume design <laughs> yeah. Maynard Keenan the, the singer he was fucking the devil for a while mm. just like this crazy satanic imagery I'm like what the fuck and <laughs> like nothing's big and then like the time isn't right uh, I started getting stuck in loops where they would grind down like a part of the song into my brain it was like right. and then it'd speed up again okay. and I'm like god damn it I've had that happen with oh. audio actually yeah yeah, yeah it's just like such a crazy uh -huh. this, uh, 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 this lost track of how time is supposed to work mm -hmm. Joe left for a while and I remember thinking like he, if he left you he went to the bathroom he went and did more shrooms <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he did that in the bathroom. <laughs> Dude, you're calling Joe your friend. Right. Joe shouldn't be leaving you in a fucking seat oh. of the tool cars. Like, hey, bro, I'll be right back. I'll but take I, three more caps. But I shouldn't have been that high. <laughs> 
But it was like, <laughs> well, sure, what can shoot shit or what it could have? Like this, I, I shouldn't be this drunk. Anyway, bye. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, that's what he Joe came did back. To you. <laughs> he came back, but he went. He snuck past security. He's like, I think I can get down on the floor. And I'm like, no, no, no. Right. And, and he goes down there, and then I remember seeing him like he waves <laughs> me over, and I just texted. We had the craziest text thread, of course, the next yeah. day. But I just texted. I'm like, I can't. I go. I'm. And it took me forever to write this message. I'm like, uh, I'm too high to do anything. Uh huh. And then. Uh, Okay, so then I get more high as the show goes on, and pretty soon I just want to leave. Mm -hmm. And then I just have memories of Joe being like, this is what you wanted. <laughs> and it's like all dark in my mind. He's like, this is what you wanted. And I'm like, I know, but it's too much. You made me. You made me do this. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a true- This is what you want. This is a true story. I've never been remotely this fucked up on <laughs> shrooms. I had done research earlier in the day for Arthur Shawcross, the, the Time Suck episode of the Genesee River Killer. Mm-hmm. My perception of ego, like who I was, got so obliterated. I swear to you, it felt so real. For a while, I was convinced that I was Arthur Shawcross. Oh, I was the Genesee River Killer. I had made up a fake world of having a podcast <laughs> to have some kind of moral distance between me and my crimes. And Joe was the investigator trying to get me to confess for murders in New York. So uh, my reality is on this fucking concert. And I'm like, no, I'm not at a concert. I'm in an interrogation cell. <laughs> and he's going to get me to confess. Like, it was so fucked. But I'm like, no, that's not, that's crazy. But then I would slip back into that. I'm like, no, you're not Arthur Shawcross. <laughs> I thought I was dead for a while. I thought I thought all the people around me were actually EMTs and my brain couldn't handle dying. Like it was fucking it was so crazy. I couldn't talk to anybody. We we left Dude, finally during this the encore. Is a fucking nightmare. During the encore, I was like, I have to go. And Joe just kept saying, he's like, no, just stay. This is this what you want. This is what you wanted. <laughs> and I just left. I got up and I just started running for like trying to make it out of the uh, the place. And then it felt like the staircase was too long. And I remember I'm like, I'm never going to get to the top of the stairs. <laughs> never ending escalator. I made it outside. And I'm just like crazy doing like a crazy speed walk. I'm just like <laughs> trying to get away from everybody. And I found a bench and just sat down. And then like Joe found me. <laughs> and then some college kid from the campus, he's like, what are you guys doing? And, he f and Joe said I was a comic. He's trying to ask me questions. I'm so obliterate. I can't communicate. And I just remember Joe at one point being like, he's too high to talk to you. <laughs> and then this kid just gave me like a get weird. Lost. Get lost. Get out of here. <laughs> no, he told this kid, he's like, we're too, we're fucked up on shrooms. We need help. And like, <laughs> so, so that kid helped us to our Uber. And then on the Uber back to La Jolla, <laughs> I, half the time I thought I was in a cop car. And I thought <laughs> I was being taken was to the fucking... station. I was so fucking high. <laughs> Joe laced it. <laughs> he was laced. Dude, he must have. It more like acid. He, he felt must, more like I was acid. Say, he must have taken LSD and just injected Dude. it into the caps and just watch, just wanted to see oh. what you would do. It was nothing like any experience. I've done a ton of shrooms before. <laughs> nothing like this. And then uh, that's the problem. That's I God. know that's the problem with drugs. You it don't is. know how fucking potent it's gonna be. <laughs> no, it's like terrible. one of those caps I had was just had the most psilocybin in it. It was a whole eighth it was, oh, that you would fuck. normally eat. So then we go back, we make it to La Jolla. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm in a uh, atmosphere I'm like comfortable with at least. Okay. Smoke a little weed, uh, uh, drink a little bit of whiskey, go down by on the beach. So it was nice. So then it was cool. The stars looked so amazing. Um, that was awesome. That's so funny. The last uh, time I did shrooms, I was on a beach in La Jolla. Oh, oh really? <laughs> it's so beautiful. That's how, that's how my night winded down. Oh, that's then, how, yeah. And then I, then I was, I was like, I was like, why are my pants wet? Oh, because you're standing in the fucking water. Oh my god! And that's why my pants were wet. That's hilarious. But I didn't notice for a long time. I was you're like, oh my god! <laughs> I was just standing in the fucking ocean. It's like, god damn it! Why are my feet so cold? Because you're in the fucking ocean. I was afraid the waves were gonna get me, and I was probably <laughs> fifty feet away from them. Like, don't drown tonight. <laughs> right. Stay away from the waves. They're not your friend. <laughs> Roll backwards. Yep. Back Stay back. Backwards somersault. Back Stay back. Somersault. Uh, our night, the, and then we we ended the night <laughs> walking back to the hotel. Joe now some it hit him later. He got really high. He thought we were the last two people on earth. Dude. And he was trying to convince me. What a fucking mess. There was no cars around. So now we're wandering around. We're just fucking weird creeps in our, in our, in our fucking 40s. Wandering, wandering around. What time is it? Oh, two in the morning. Okay, so people are kind of around. No one's around. What, where are they? It's a very sleepy community. That's what we are oh, trying to figure okay. out. So we're in a residential area. Walking, we're just looking into people's windows. Not in their yard. But we're, on, we're, in the, we're walking around the street looking into people's windows being like, there's no one. <laughs> There's no one else. How are we going to find out if only two is break into a home? <laughs> and that's how every fucking home is. That's how. That's why people get shot inside yes. of houses. Like, we got to make sure we're not the only ones alive. Let's go in here. <laughs> and if no there. one's in the bed. We'll wake them up and just, <laughs> we'll just, we'll ask them a few questions. Are you, <laughs> are you real? Are you alive? Do you have any food? And if they are, yeah. Do you have any food? Do you have a sandwich? <laughs> do you have a sandwich? Also, do you know where I live? <laughs> 
So the why this is so dumb if, if it's not already obvious. <laughs> oh, it's like fuck. don't just. It was so crazy. Mm. I, I made no preparations. This this was the dumb part of this. I didn't write down anywhere on my person. I didn't write myself a note or anything. Be like, this is your hotel. Mm. This is um, the number of the hotel. Just for anybody to help me. If Joe, if I would have gotten separated from Joe, I would have just spent the night on the street somewhere, just hiding in an alley or something, <laughs> waiting to not be high. Oh, I would have been. I would have been taken probably to the fucking <laughs> emergency room or something by somebody because I was too crazy to talk. I guess picture. So don't. I don't know. It's a very irresponsible way to do drugs. Oh fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt, uh, Edward Scissorhands type character is oh, what I is that uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Yeah. Johnny Depp. Like I picture that kind of like <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to hand people a piece of information that tells them where to take you. <laughs> They're like Jesus Christ! Like you look, get away you from look me. insane. True. <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> take me home. <laughs> Take me home. Quick, 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 quick. Snip, 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 Take snip, me snip, home. Snip, 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 snip. Take me home. <laughs> oh, my stepmom's so scared of me. <laughs> One of the funniest <laughs> thoughts I had the next day of reflecting on my mental state the night before, I remember in my mind, I don't think I was doing this out loud. I mean, funnier if I was, but I don't <laughs> think I was saying anything out loud. I remember thinking that Tool, the band, <laughs> was trying to punish me. <laughs> and I was like begging Maynard Keenan to show me mercy. <laughs> Because it's like their visuals were too intense and it was scaring me. I'm just like, I don't know I don't, what I had to do Why'd they pick me? Why, why are you so mad at me? I was, I was okay, completely maybe insane. I shouldn't have come. <laughs> I shouldn't have come. Right? Okay. I didn't know you didn't want me here. I didn't know. You, you just had to say it. I wouldn't have come. <laughs> why are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? I'm so sorry, uh, Daddy Maynard. It is so, for, for people who haven't done this, like these, it is so, cra and I read more about them, like I've read about them in the past, but the next day about how they can deconstruct your ego. Like the part of your, your brain that regulates this is you mm -hmm. this is the rest of the world it just fucking destroys it and here's how you, you have fit enough. into it mm -hmm. yeah. here's how you fit into it's it it's like here, here's your perception of time here's how time works like all of that stuff was like nope we're shutting it all down <laughs> you are one with everything you are one <laughs> you are every, you're off the shot cross you're the water <laughs> you're the guy sitting next to you right. you died and you're alive you are Maynard you are Maynard Keenan <laughs> you're mad at yourself he's mad at you Joe's mad at you punish yourself punish yourself run stairs run <laughs> stairs woman in the bathroom woman in the bathroom is you <laughs> God damn it! Yeah, it's fucking crazy. And that's the thing about shrooms is that yeah. you're one with everything, right. and it goes one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Either either you're one with Whoa. everything and everything likes you, yeah, or you're one with everything and everything hates you. Yep. And in the beach, <laughs> it was beautiful, you're right? But fucking way too intense oh, of a concert to be on wild. that high. Yeah. So, um, I mean, back wow. to fucking doing drugs that you don't know, like what the fuck's in there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that's the that's the real bummer with drugs. You can't leave anymore. Listen, your tour is canceled because <laughs> we got to take care of you. We got coke in the alley. <laughs> We're trying to get you some fentanyl strips, and now we're fucking going too far in shrooms. True. You're staying home. Yeah. I, I, just stay home. Lindsay just has me like a cage. <laughs> yeah. she's, she's just like, like the, they take me, they take the cage to the studio, podcast studio, <laughs> and just like push me out of the cage. Like tell me to sit to the mic and tell my stories. Thank you. And then and after, <laughs> these podcasts start being so long because I'm just trying to delay being put back in the cage. <laughs> right, keep dragging it out. <laughs> Junk mail, you're asking me for more and more and more <laughs> messages. I just keep talking. Let's keep Let's talking. Here for some more listeners. I, I don't have any more. Well, come on. It's it here 60. The You've only done 50. The cameras pick up two orderlies finally at the end of the show and just fucking dragging me out of the room. That's how the show ends. Old school. I like, don't want to go back to my cage! Like the cane on, right, the, right. <laughs> on the theater stage. Whoop! Just yanking you into a cage. I mean, oh my fuck. god. And we might get there. But yeah. goddamn, I guess brought back some good memories. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you're back and you're I'm back safe. And fine. Oh yeah, I, and by the in the by the time we were down by the uh, beach, I mean yeah, it was weird like looking for people, <laughs> but like but we were in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, sure. Looking at people's windows, fucking weird. Yeah, that's but weird. I was happy while I did it. But I felt good. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that to an <sighs> officer makes me so happy. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I don't know. I feel good. I'm looking at windows. Look, I'm happy. <laughs> Look, am I smiling? Yeah. Then get the fuck out of here. Do you understand what I did to get here? <laughs> I Ra Maynard Keenan told me to leave the show. <laughs> he was punishing me. A never ending staircase. I was Arthur <laughs> Shawcross. <laughs> I was a serial killer. And you guys were after me. You, tried. you found me. I never confessed. <laughs> but now I'm fine. Is Joe with you? <laughs> it's just, is Joe, Joe, Joe is, sent you to me. Is Joe your chief? Oh, God, I knew it. Fucking <laughs> goddamn. Okay, I did it. <laughs> did what? I, right. killed, I killed those women in the this, in this 80s in New York. Yes, I was in Rochester. And in jail. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> that was fun. That was great. Um, okay, we're going to move on here from some of our dummy listeners. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let's roll it. <laughs> Fucking shrooms, man. Oh, 
I want to do. I want to do them again. Now, I, I don't want to trip that hard. Though. I have I, tablets. I, hate that. I have tablets that are um, a small dose. It's are they on your person? Mm, they're in my house. Oh. But they're microdosing, and, and it's like it's way more controlled. Okay. <laughs> a lot more. Here we are. Yep. And we're focused, and we're going to open our warm, brains. Warm, fuzzy feeling. A little open. Not in the depths of hell. <laughs> Less. I'm a serial killer. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Our first listener story <laughs> is coming in from Dummy Curtis. Who writes, before I share my dumb story, I have two super special requests. Will you give a shout out to my wonderful and dumb girlfriend, Sabrina? Done. Done. She introduced me to the Is We Dumb. And I've never been a fan of podcasts, radios for music, not talking. And I always thought that, but she uh, she played your podcast in the car one day and I've been hooked ever since. Awesome job, Sabrina. Thank you, Sabrina. I'm only on episode 13, but I'm not skipping a single show. And when I'm caught up, I'll start your other Bad Magic podcasts. Please do. Yes. It's weird shit on all of them. My driving has been more pleasant. Instead of listening to rock and metal and raging at all the dumb drivers and threatening to kill their families and pets for cutting me off, etc., I laugh from point A to point B. Also, now, uh, when I leave a review for a place, I'll make sure that it's logical review and to avoid being a one-star hero. Yes. This guy's just, he's learning. He gets it. And that's what it's all about. He goes, second request, he goes, anytime you have to have Zach do anything, <laughs> just, just yell at him for it. <laughs> I don't know why, but it cracks me up hearing you scream at him for putting something on the screen. He's gotten better, and you've yelled at him less, but I miss it. I'm sure he's a nice dummy, but it makes me laugh. Uh, well, he's on episode 13, so he doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's going to be fucking long end! <laughs> from, from moving forward uh, but it, it will continue I promise you that okay so now my dumb story yeah before I changed careers to insurance I was a police officer working nights in a small town in Oklahoma oh wow our department purchased body cameras and I was the lucky officer to be the first person to go on duty with the cameras I you manually turn them on when making contact and then turn them off after contact when they are recording they make a periodic beep to let you know that they're recording I couldn't stand the chief who is no longer there because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> Important for what's coming forward. Okay, okay. I made a traffic stop, turned on my camera, and after the driver left, I forgot to turn it off. A friend of mine called while I was driving around looking for trouble, and I vented about what a piece of shit the oh, chief was. Oh, no. While my camera was recording everything. This is a 15 or 20 minute phone call, and at one point he asks, what is that beep that I keep hearing? Yikes. I turned off the camera and told him, I'm screwed. Oh my God. Because I was the first person to wear the camera, the chief eagerly watched the footage when he started his shift in the morning and sent a group text to all officers saying something like, if you have a problem with me, let me know instead of venting to your friends. I didn't get in trouble. Uh, and I did tell him in person why I didn't like him and nothing came of it. I didn't get into any trouble, just teased about it for a while. I wish you nothing okay. but the best, dummy Curtis. Curtis, you, uh, you got lucky with the uh, chief there in the end. Yeah. Just like not knowing when you're being recorded. Yep. I mean, there's some... that. I mean, there, there's a reason that there's like laws against it. Because it just shows like there's... Like you can't just wiretap people. Right, 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 right. Like, right. So because people are fucking weird. And people yeah. say fucked yeah. up shit. Yeah, they'll say things, different things privately and than publicly. You, right. And, and the, no matter who you are, there's yeah. an expectation about who you, uh, whether it's your, your career or what profession you're in. Right. Or in society, there's that version of you yeah. that is going to be acceptable by the uh, most amount of people. Right. But everybody's fucking pretty, uh, has says some pretty fucked up shit <laughs> right. when nothing else is around. Yeah, like if you say something for shock, because like, the problem with that, those clips, those hot mic things, let's say you say something for shock value right. to, uh, you know, make your friend laugh <laughs> and, and you have a certain report with them and you know that you can say crazy things that you don't even mean just to get a rise out of them and then they take that out of context right and people have had that happen to them uh-huh. and then you don't you're just random john q public member whoa <laughs> oh shit whoa that was loud and then <laughs> that comes up for something different i fucking paused it i have no idea why i started playing oh and then and, and then, continue on <laughs> and then you hear you know that out of context and that's your intro <laughs> Sorry, to that person that killed me uh yeah it sounds terrible yeah, absolutely like right it's it just um everybody is that way i yeah. don't care what you say yeah when no one's around you act differently um and this reminded me i know i've shared uh, a certain radio story about a guy that was swearing on the microphone uh oh, yeah. when he, like with the the audio engineers changed around one of the studio rooms in our radio building uh they were messing with some remote equipment okay, okay. and they didn't know that they had set up a studio yeah in, uh, in a certain way so all the commercials that would be rec- recording in the studio bay right which should never be live on the air right when you're messing up reading a commercial yeah. i do it too 
Yeah. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, and, and you know, uh, come on down to Cal Auto Liquidators. We, get, oh, I'm fucking stupid. Right. Like you mess up the copy yep. and you just yep. restart. I did that all he, the time. And he was doing this and I heard it over the airwaves. I was like, oh my God. And I ran in there and just grabbed the microphone. Oh. I was like, fucking, yeah, just yeah, yeah. get out of here. Get out of here. Right. Yep, yep. So this is another story from Radio Land. Yeah. Um, where when I was first starting, and I'm not going to say his name, just to protect him, because he never did actually get in trouble for this. But I was sitting in with him during his night shifts, okay. kind of learning the ropes. Yeah, um, This is very early on. And we got along great, and we were hanging out, and there was a new song that came out at the time. Uh, and I remember it <laughs> very vividly. It was Corn, and it was a mashup featuring Skrillex. Oh, like okay. the dub artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why that shit yeah. just blasted. I have yep. no idea why that was blasting. It wasn't fucking blasting earlier when we yeah. subjected it. Yeah. Um <laughs> and this song came on and he did not care for it. Okay. And it was it was we played it all the time. He didn't it was like very, the Skrillex very pop mashup. Yeah. Right. And I and, and again, this is not us saying it, but for context, yeah. just so you realize how bad it was to come over the microphone. Yeah. He's introducing it and he goes, you know, coming up next, we got a, you know, whatever, a new banger from from Corn featuring Skrillex called Get Up right here on Rock 94 and a half. And he goes to turn the pots up on the mixing board. Yep. And he goes, and it's fucking gay. Oh, and no. forgets to turn off his his microphone. Oh no! <laughs> and I'm on the other side of the table. And I go, oh, like I gasped. Ooh. And he goes, like he has his oh, headphones god. on. He goes, oh my god! And he shuts it all off and like turns the monitors off and looks at me. And he goes, did you hear that? <laughs> and then he starts looking at the phone line yeah. to see if our boss is going to call because our boss is always listening. Right. And we're just waiting for the hotline to light up, and it never did. And then we have a text line. It was like, whoops. Oh. Oh, is, is it gay? Oh, and it just no. goes, it's just ringing through. So our boss wasn't listening at the time. So I had to help him get into the back, like the server, and delete yeah. out a bunch of texts off the text line. Oh my god! So that our boss, our boss never found out. But it's just one of those things. Like he just he thought he turned off his mic. Your boss shows up the next day. Why is there a protest outside? <laughs> right. Why is there 150 picketers right. outside the station? I, no, no, no. I, I have no idea. What'd I you, have no idea. What'd you do? <laughs> what'd you do? I don't know. It's, it has a sign that says, "Is it fucking gay?" Like, I, what does that have to do with anything? Oh my God. Dude, that'd be so terrible. Yes. Oh, man. But Hot yeah. mics, man. They've taken down careers. They have, and they will continue. There'll I, be more incidences just like that. I think about the guy. Maybe he's back now, but who was the guy? It was when Trump said the grab him by the pussy thing, mm -hmm. and he was a e E.T. reporter or something? Like I Billy so. Billy Banks? No, not Billy Banks. That's the fucking Tybo guy. Billy Bush? <laughs> sure. It's some Billy guy. Billy, Billy fucking Billy fucking Goat. Billy guy. Billy Goat. And, and he didn't even say the thing that people, but he was like, oh, yeah. Like some. Something like went, went along with it. You betcha. And he was fucking yanked. <laughs> and I, and I'm, I'm, of course I'm not condoning. That's the point of this. We're not condoning what these people say. But it's just like, that is crazy that you could have like, you could have years of an impeccable career. And then you say one dumb thing uh -huh. that happens to go out and be broadcast to the public. And it's just like, beep, 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 beep. It's <laughs> like he just, he fucking disappeared for a good two years. Yeah. He might still be gone. I don't know. And that's even worse when uh, in an awkward situation. I yeah. don't know about you. My first instinct is an imme is not immediately punch the dude in the face. Yeah, it's like, well, what was the context? What was going on there? Even that, like, so if and, I'm and, and let him apologize. Sure. Right. If I'm sitting next to Trump yeah. and he says that, yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, but like, because just like, I don't want, don't fucking say anything more. Right. But in this moment, I'm about to interview you. I'm not going to stand up and punch you. Like how how right? Like, yeah, what, the expectations what, are a little crazy. How do you want them to stand up mm -hmm. to it? Like. <laughs> What? Fuck you! Right? Fuck you! Kick their chair fucking out from underneath them. them in the right. fucking jaw. It's like, no, nah, that's not yeah, how. Yeah, you did it. Like you're in a bar, you right. hear all sorts of fucked up shit. Right. And if someone's saying something that I, that I don't agree with, I don't be like, fucking what? You start punching yeah. them. I just go, yeah, it's crazy. And, and, and so, turn my back yeah. and fucking move on. And sometimes I would be like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't you know, know like, about that. But yeah, and, and and it is that crazy thing because I I have in moments been the person that's like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And it is so uncomfortable, <laughs> and and it rarely. I mean, sometimes, yeah, sometimes, like, it, it is good to say things, but, like, to think that, like, people just do that left and right, and and that's what kills me, is a lot of people are like, man, you should have said something. A lot of the people who cherry the loudest for, like, man, if that was me, I'm, in my head, I'm always like, no, you wouldn't have said shit. No, absolutely not. You'd be like, oh, okay. And you're about you're to like, get a national away. interview right. with this dude. Yeah. Like, you're going to, I mean, there's a, it's, it's just so, right. it's just different. Yeah. It is different. Yeah. Okay, should we move on? Yeah. Okay. Our second listener story is coming in from a former professional baseball player. 
Mr. Nice. Kyle Blanks. And thanks for the gifts, Kyle. Yeah, thank you for thank sending you for that the in. CBD cream. He'll, he'll yeah. dad, talk a little bit about that here in just a second. He says, good morning, Dan and Joe. He must have been up in the morning. He's, he's up in the morning. Hope you're well. My name is Kyle Blanks, and I couldn't thank you both enough for uncovering the depth of human stupidity. Thank you. And fucking great power hitting, by the way. Right. I played professional baseball for just over 12 years, 12 years from 05 to 17, and I have since been working to help other humans awesome. understand the potential of cannabis with some yes. amazing people. Some of those great people are Brandy and Tyler Banks. Thanks. Maybe related way back. <laughs> and they attended the, your most recent show in Loveland, Colorado. Oh, that's super fun. Yeah. They have been incredible influence in my life in many ways, including Tyler introducing me to both Is Be Dumb and Time Suck Podcast. That's awesome. Welcome aboard. Yes. I'm also going to send in some Roadrunner CBD products for you to try and share amongst the bad magicians. And if you find yourselves in the Loveland area in the future, don't hesitate to come uh, take a walk through the trees. More importantly, I have quite a few stupid things to share. That's a pretty neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, he, city. T- you know, town, and he, and he sent in a picture of uh, his, I don't know, farm, his, mm-hmm. his crops. Oh, cool. And they're so shiny. Oh. They're beautiful. That's awesome. Yep. And thanks for the cream. It, uh, it, I've had a sore back lately. I've been using it. And it, it yeah, feels good. Yeah, that's great. An infinite amount of dumb, <laughs> of stupid and dumb, can be disguised as superstition in sports. I wasn't the most superstitious of players, so chucking 20 ounces of A1 sauce after a game was simply a question of how much? Like 200 bucks. <laughs> Uh, I've also heard of a maple syrup chug in the spring training for around the same amount. I'm sure far dumber things happen all the time for far less or even nothing. But this is truly not smart. But it was uh, it was awesome to watch as so a being a spectator. A team I was playing for at the current time had a pregame ritual of taking a dabble of those super fucking hot sauces and uh, rubbing them on their gums oh. while blasting "Welcome to the Jungle." I've never had a huge problem with hot sauces myself, but some guys definitely had a more uncomfortable time than others. As we were closing in the end of the season, uh, I'm already injured, not playing, and I believe we're in a bit of a skid, so I'm on the shelf watching the superstition brew. Cue the music, Welcome to the Jungle starts playing, and everyone who's in starts dropping sauce. I remember nothing out of the ordinary when all of a sudden superstition strikes. For the good of the team, one brave soul decided to take what you'd call the poop hole loophole. Nearly an instant after putting liquid magma in his number two hole, oh my god! He began to oh dance the fire in pain. It was only minutes into the suffering, while pouring milk down his crack to put out the oh. inferno. I noticed that look of slight regret paired with pride, like the baseball gods would be on our side. <laughs> but why the fuck <laughs> did it smell my poor shit socket? Oh. I have no fucking clue if we won, but I've never seen such blind superstitious team uh, commitment. Thank you all again for everything you do, Kyle Blanks. Kyle Blanks, I love that Kyle. I, I just love God. like I, I would. That'd be so funny if they go on like a huge winning streak, and <laughs> right. you're just like, I gotta do it again. That's how how it starts, right? Just like every game, just putting a hot sauce in his butthole, mm-hmm. and then just oh, this burns so good, but it makes the baseball got so happy. It just becomes uh, part of the team budget for like gallons of milk and hot sauce, <laughs> and probably like extra pairs of pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've never rubbed. I've never rubbed hot sauce in my butthole. Have you? Nope. Not on purpose, anyway. I've never had Icy Hot. I'm trying to think if I've ever had that near down. I've accidentally had Icy Hot on the on the private, so that's not fun. Yeah, I feel like I have too, but never Hot Sauce. Never Hot Sauce, no. Ooh. It's a weird place for it to accidentally end up. Right. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that, that would not. I wonder how that would feel. Probably really, really bad. It has to burn. It has to burn so much. That's mm. such a tender area. It is a sensitive little thing. <sighs> can, you, can you taste it? I not I don't no I don't think you can taste your bottle. What okay, cool. you we could go. taste stuff from there. I was you, gonna say what your butthole if doesn't taste it. You did it. Mm-hmm. And I licked your butthole. Could Ooh. I taste it? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to be clear. <laughs> I just want to make sure they were on the same page. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great, 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 great. No, but superstitions are so weird. I remember yeah. uh, throughout through sports, like you would do well, I mean, one of the big ones in baseball is mm-hmm. you never touch the fucking lines. You don't touch like the third base or the first really? place lines. No, okay. you, you jump over them. Huh. You don't want to fucking mess up the chalk lines. And I remember, like, I wasn't paying attention one time. Like, I was reaching back, like, someone was throwing me a ball. Yeah. And I scuffed it. And one of my good friends got, like, legitimately fucking mad at me. Like, dude, you just lost us the game. Right. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And we, we won. It's like, fuck, man. Like, he was super pissed about it. What if you slide? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, this is going in and out. So if you oh the home plate going past third base like the foul line yes so ah, those lines gotcha. so when you're coming gotcha. from the dugout on oh, the yeah, way out the lines. Gotcha. and you're skipping out to your position yep don't touch the fucking line I got gotcha. you like that's that was yeah. just like I know it's a big one I know a lot of people have that one huh. but I've got yeah legitimate fights over that spitting like seeds when you're not supposed to not doing the rally cap when everyone else is funny and like they want to kick you off the fucking team <laughs> you're like how about watch how about I don't do it and then if we get a hit you guys can stop doing this shit. 
Like that's maybe that's how we start looking at it. It's funny that the baseball specifically seems to be the most There's associated a lot of with sports. A lot of downtime. Oh in baseball. yeah, trying to keep your just something to do. Mm -hmm. Team bonding, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. When you're not, yeah. There's a lot of just kind of standing by yourself out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sitting in the dugout, kind of by yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that makes sense. That makes so that, sense. You know, it's where it all comes from. Uh, I do have a really fun apocalypse pending for this week. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, let's roll it. Okay, <laughs> this is uh, this is crazy. Okay, um, this was something that I just came across online. And <laughs> I I can't believe the balls on this guy to try to get away with this. So a doctor no longer allowed to practice after uh, not no longer allowed to practice after branding patients' livers with his initials. What? Yeah, he's writing his initials on people's livers. Right. So a doctor in the UK what the has been removed from the country's medical register I would hope so. for branding patients' livers with his initials. Oh my God. The incidents occurred in February and August of 2013 <laughs> when Simon Bramhill used a surgical device to write his initials on <sighs> transplanted livers at the end of two surgeries. The 1.6-inch initials were discovered That's by big. another doctor when an organ transplant by Bramhill failed after about a week. Yeah, probably didn't So somebody went the in there and was branding. like, let's, let's take a look here. Let's take, a, let's take a look what's going on here. And it just says fucking Joe. Oh my God. Joe was here. <laughs> or like, or Dale Dale was here. No, Simon, Dale. Simon. Uh, reminds me of like a bathroom stall. Right, right. So what if this guy found it and just crossed it out? And like, it, it, let's say that he said like, Bram Hill was here. And he goes, Bram Hill sucks dick. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> branch it on the other level. That level's. is so, what a weird thing to do. I know. What a weird ego flex. Absolutely. This is Simon Brando's work. <laughs> right. <laughs> Simon Brandle put his liver here. Who would do that? But what other professions, like if you go to the oh, dentist man. and like they just brand their initials? Simon Brandle <laughs> did this root canal on the roof of your mouth. Right. <laughs> it's just SB. Right. And you, it's, it's on the front side. You're never going to fucking see it. <laughs> Unless you have to get some crazy work done. Like, what the fuck? Is that an SB? He's a cosmetic surgery. Like, you get a boob job. These are Simon Brandle's titties. Right. On the little bag on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to see that. <laughs> or if you want to be super extreme with it, like a proctologist. Oh, yeah. Go in. He could initial the inside of your colon. Right. And the only way that you're going to see that is if you're having like a triple penetrated anal orgy and you prolapse your asshole. Mm -hmm. And that pops out and it just says SB. <laughs> Good work, Simon <laughs> Bramhill. <laughs> Done it again. Did it again. Another victim. Oh, what <laughs> a weird, weird thing to do. What a weird thing to think that that's, um, uh, first of all, okay. Yeah. But what crosses your mind? Like why? To, ri to risk, I mean. Yeah, your entire your medical career. <sighs> like you're fucked to risk your medical career and to risk fucking up their liver and possibly killing somebody because you get some weird infection because you needed to write SB on a liver <laughs> on a transplant liver in someone's a, body like what a weird thing like, is so that, weird it's like, a, it's like a weird power play oh yeah uh, that, maybe, that dude maybe I'm fucking bored and I'm just gonna start writing my initial on on organs I'm reading like narcissism where there, he sees him he's like I hope I'm glad you're doing well Plus, my initials are inside of you. <laughs> yeah. Like that kind of weird like shit. Like some weird fucked up thing where like when they come for their checkups, <laughs> mm, I've written inside your body. <laughs> pen right inside. Ah. Put my penis. I, What's that guy like in bed too? Just oh, like he, terrible. A, a, after like uh, he's over, you know, he just like has a, he, he has a Sharpie. He just fucking signs her ass. <laughs> SB was here. SB was here. <laughs> it always will be. <laughs> Sincerely, SB. I, I was inside you, Simon Brandle. <laughs> One, four, right. 2018. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seals it. <laughs> little sh -sh -sh. Sprays a little sealant over the top of it. That's not going anywhere. I, he, he pulls his pants out. He signed his own dick. Property of Simon Brandle. Right. This is Simon Brandle's dick. <laughs> his arms, elbows, it's forward everything. legs. It's SB. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know that they did it differently, but in my brain, it would be a lot worse or more fun if he actually had like a like a like a branding like a cattle. Oh brand. my god, Dan. iron! Psst. Yeah, what's that called? Uh, a cattle prod? Uh, not prod? No, it's just a branding iron. Yeah, that's, how, that's what it is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, where he just does the surgery and goes, <laughs> just sticks his hand out for the nurse, right? And just out of the coal fire, just oh my god, psst, psst, psst. on the like, he does heart surgery, just. <laughs> Sticks a fucking SB on there. That's weird. Little stamp. Yeah. So that was a uh, that was a pock was pending. Okay. Which is super stupid. One star heroes. I get no respect in real life. Always am upset. So I let them know I hate them on the internet. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. We're on we, the internet. Where, yeah. Where are you taking us? Where are we going? Uh, I'm taking us to West Hollywood, to okay. Carney's uh, Hot Dogs on Sunset Strip. Ooh. Now, this is a little landmark place. It's like a little uh, railroad car, just right on Sunset, um, not very far at all from the comedy store. Um, you know, it's like a late night, like dive typically. People go there during the day to bring their kids just for like, uh, I don't know, just um, the novelty of it. Sure. It's, it, it was. I, we went there. Lindsay and I went there after my show at the comedy store because it was like it was the only place open still in that little area on a Sunday night. And and it was actually one of the when I went to the comedy store for the first time just to check out a show um, many years ago. Took an exploratory trip down to LA. I want to say like in 2002 or something around there. And okay. I remember going there and just thinking like, oh, I wonder if like Jim Carrey used to come here after, you know, because all the, uh, you know, uh, Sam Kinison. And mm -hmm. I wonder if all these people, that Richard Pryor probably grabbed a hot dog here. It was just cool to be where maybe they had been. Mm -hmm. But but I never expected the food to be good. It's a fucking weird, cheap hot dog place on the Sunset Strip. Right. And anybody expecting like delicious food, it's like you're fucking crazy. <laughs> right. You, you go there to like be in a cool little spot that other people were in for like the history mm -hmm. and to get a shitty hot dog. I mean, it's a, it's a fucking train hot dog place. <laughs> what, do you, what do you expect? What do you expect? Right. You gotta have real low expectations. Uh -huh. But it does have uh, four out of five stars on Yelp. You know, 823 reviews. So let's check out uh, what the one star people are saying. Okay, so this is a pet peeve of mine for restaurants in general, but this is Joseph M. Uh, one star. Found hair in the food I bought tonight. Disappointed longtime customer. Establishment needs to provide training or something to prevent this. Disgust it. And I'm going to pull up this. It is one tiny hair. I right? see it. Right by this man. What the? What kind of fucking? You're going to a shitty fucking hot dog place inside a train car. I'd be more surprised if there wasn't a hair right? in it. <laughs> and, and I love like we, they, they gotta have a company kind of training to prevent this. Don't go to restaurants ever <laughs> if you never want to get hair in your food. And also, I think half the time it's the person's fucking hair. <laughs> Probably they're eating it. One of their own hairs falls in there. But I just love the outrage. If there was like a nest of hair. With a fucking cockroach living inside the middle of it, I'd be like, yeah, that's outrageous. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. But if it's one hair, yeah, people have hair. <laughs> Even when they put the hair nets on, hair nets on, there's hair on their arms. Mm -hmm. It's unreasonable to never expect to find hair in your food. <laughs> right. it, it just something that's always annoyed me in general. Does people, it suck? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> get over it. <laughs> right. Like when, when people get outraged about hair in their food in general, I'm always like, you're such a fucking baby. <laughs> Pull it out. <gasps> hair in my food. Eat it, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> You fucking Pull it baby. Out, move on. Put your diaper on and eat your fucking hair. <laughs> um, for this next one, Marie G. Uh, one star. <laughs> okay, just ridiculous. Uh, um, <laughs> so much anger. So much anger over her experience. Let me start by saying this place is all hype. The food was absolutely tasteless and horrible. It's a hot dog. It's a hot dog. <laughs> You're going to a cheap hot dog place. Of course it is. It's supposed to be tasteless. Isn't it? <laughs> That's the whole point. OMG dot dot dot. Maybe it was a good place back in the day, but now it's total garbage. <laughs> she hyphenated it. <laughs> it's garbage. We ordered the chili cheese fries and the cheese was forced in a cup and cold uh, and cold chili poured on and sat as we waited for the other food. The workers behind the counter should take lessons in actual cooking. Yeah, they work at a hot dog place. Mm -hmm. Not bag food or canned. It resembles... <laughs> why is the question mark there? No, no, yeah, why is there a question mark? <laughs> Not bag food. Or canned. <laughs> or canned. Or uh, canned. It resembles less than pinks on La Brea. That's another hot dog place. Mm. That's really bad. They are not open for a reason. And you guys are on your way there. I, I wish you would just close and stop taking people's money for the horrid food. You're a joke. Close down. <laughs> she cut down. She just like dude. rampant. She's getting worked up. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck exactly. your family. Fuck your family. Not because of the virus, because of your so called workers. Stop hi uh <laughs> stop hair. <laughs> Whatever that is. Cheap help and get quality skilled cooks who went to school and graduated. Otherwise your business will fail. I won't be returning ever, nor will a lot of my staff. Good luck. I just love she goes, skilled cooks who went to school and graduated. Skilled cooks do not work <laughs> at a fucking train hot dog place. I mean, they could. They could. But they're taking it temporarily. Easy. They're <laughs> right. they're they're fucking They know they know what's going on. They're my, slumming my, it. They're my slumming kids, it. 8 and 11. They yeah. cook hot dogs. Right. <laughs> right. So, that should tell you where this, the this, type of worker is going to get. This place is basic hamburgers and cheeseburgers, mm -hmm. hot dogs, chili fries, like the bottom it's like bottom cafeteria shit. Yeah, it's like what's served at like a high school basketball yeah. game. 
I, I don't, I'm not a good cook. <laughs> I could learn their entire menu in one hour <laughs> and fucking do it great. Probably less. Probably less. They could show up and be like, hey, make this. You're like, I got it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> hey, man, you're going to want to take this burger patty <laughs> out of the freezer. You throw it on this fucking big hot piece of metal. It's always set to the tam- same temperature. <laughs> how do I flip it? How do I, how do I flip? That's a great question. <laughs> you're you're going to want to get this metal spatula. You slide it under the burger and you flip it to the other side of the burger. But what if they want cheese on it? G- great question. You're going to want to take this pre-sliced, pre-packaged cheese slice, take out one slice, throw it on the burger. Okay. But then how do I get it onto the bun? Another great question. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna take your spatula under the burger with the cheese on it, <laughs> put it on the bun. But then what? There's no top on it. What do I do? Great question. You're going to want to take the other half of the bun, stick it on there, <laughs> put it in the basket. But then what do I do? <laughs> Give it to the customer. Without a bag? Do they need a napkin? Sure. Sure, you're gonna want to ask those questions, <laughs> right. right? But it is like this is the most basic level of cooking. <laughs> What's next? What is next? <laughs> hot dogs even easier. <laughs> what do I do? How do I get a hot dog out of this big hot bowl of water? <laughs> right. We have these things called tongs. Great question, <laughs> Jerry. Show him the tongs. Right. right. <laughs> and the mandatory click. Click, 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 click. I just picture an idiot like they're holding each end of the tong side, Brad, and like, and like Brad. <laughs> no, but, but they're holding this part that's supposed to grab the thought of in one in each hand and like smashing it together. <laughs> Their knuckles are bleeding. Knuckles are bleeding. They're hit, they're pushing the hot dog down in the water with the like top of the tongs. <laughs> no, no, Tom, you're gonna want to flip it around. Oh, okay. That thank makes you. sense. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, all that stuff is easy. But how do fries work? Magic? Right. No. You're going to want to take this basket of frozen french fries, you dip it in the grease. <laughs> then what do I do? Wait till it looks like fries. <laughs> right. Then pull it out of the grease. <laughs> it's easy. Guess what? It's going to beep. <laughs> and it, the beep is really fucking it loud. Won't, the beeping won't stop until you pull <laughs> it you out of the oil. <laughs> Okay, I guess I could try. <laughs> these, these fries don't have any salt on them. Well, what you got to do is... There's a little shaker. <laughs> and what you're going to do is you're going to want to take it and dump it upside down over the food. You want the salt to... Co- yeah, this is the most basic level of food. Ah. Uh, so this next one, Tony L. <laughs> uh, this is just an idiot. Uh, this is so great. Who just doesn't know how bathrooms work. Tony L writes, one star. So rude. One of your employees opened the restroom door without permission. Next time, they should knock before opening the door on someone. Hey, Tony, next time you should lock the fucking bathroom door, you moron. That's what I was going to say. And why did he write it like it was a, uh, a book title? Right? <laughs> <laughs> every word is, is it's capitalized. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Except yeah. for on. The first letter of every word <laughs> is capitalized. It's capitalized. It's just a book. That's weird that somebody who doesn't know how spelling works would also not know how to lock a bathroom door. <laughs> what a quinkin' ink. Hey, I'm so sick of people <laughs> Always barging in on me. Everywhere I go, it's the same story. This world is nothing but perverts. Right. Everywhere I go, everyone's watching me pee. <laughs> and he's just peeing in the street. <laughs> no uh, one looks away anymore. <laughs> Maria S. One Star. Uh, disgusting food. I'll never go back to this place again. Not sure what the rave is about it, but it's definitely not the food. I had a pasta salad that was tasteless and chili fries that were bland. My partner had a hot dog that wasn't cooked properly and again was very tasteless. My stomach did not feel too good. A few hours later, I felt sick. You know why you felt sick, Maria S.? Because you had chili fries from a fucking train car. <laughs> right. That's what happens. That's how it works. You, you ordered a stomachache. <laughs> it's a gamble. <laughs> it's a, and then we're surprised you got a stomach. You know what? My stomach also hurt mm-hmm. after leaving Carney's because it's fucking garbage. <laughs> it's supposed, you know, it's it's drunken garbage. <laughs> oh my gosh. McDonald's upset my stomach again. <laughs> Taco Bell. I can't believe it. <laughs> I went for a nice snack at three o'clock in the morning after having 13 Heinekens. Beers. And I had a large chili fry and two cheese hot dogs and I didn't feel good. <laughs> and I feel like shit. <laughs> What gives, Carnies? <laughs> I was fine before this. <laughs> uh, Natalie G. Oh, when, okay. I love the employee response is why I included this. It's another hair one. Found hair. One star. Found hair in my French fries. Hair. Uh, hair. hair. All caps. Hair. I found ha- found hair in my French fries. <laughs> hair. It was short, curly, dark hair. And when I approached the counter to let them know, I did not want a refund. No, did I not want new fries. I just wanted to let them know that there were four hairs in the french fries they served me, and I showed them. The workers laughed and said, what if it's your hair? I was in complete shock. (laughs) They would even think that I would make a false claim or or all of a sudden have curly hair and my hair is super straight. I just couldn't believe how they handled the situation. I will not be returning ever again. What I hope happened here is that some maniacs were working (laughs) who thought it was funny to put some of your pubes in in customers' hair. And then when the customers complained, be like, what was your hair? (laughs) What if that was your fucking pussy hair? (laughs) 
<laughs> and then they just laugh and like high five. Close the door, close the window. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is the, probably a deserved one star. I bet, yeah. but funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again, it's Carnies. <laughs> You're going to a place called Carnies. I picture you show up like, hey, there's four hairs in my food, and they yank a handful of hair out and put it in. But like, now there's more. eight. Now there's eight. <laughs> high five. Right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Slap the fucking fries out of her hands. <laughs> fuck out of here. Throw hot dogs at her as she leaves. <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck it. Get out. Scram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need music for this. This is oh, one of those okay. people where it's like, how do you have this much time? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Anna, one star. All right, here I go. <laughs> Just got my late night delivery order from them. Real excited because I used to frequent the one in Studio City when I lived in the Valley. I was so looking forward to those classic flavor combos again. <laughs> what? Those regular standby menu items that taste like childhood and 1944. <laughs> well, folks. <laughs> Dude. We ain't in Kansas anymore. Oh, God. And I'm far past childhood. Still, I didn't need that brutal reminder when I opened the sloppy packaging. My super large drink, in fact, was just set inside the repurposed supply box my food came in. I have no problem with restaurants packaging with their cardboard boxes. Oh, contraire, mon frere. <laughs> this bitch. <best. laughs> I think that is convenient. But to just stand up a large soda in a corner of a box that didn't even have enough items to lean up against... The soda, strike one. <laughs> Going down. I opened my package excitedly because, hey, fatty food is exciting. I was ready for a nice fat sausage <laughs> with all the fixings, and I received a soggy bun and a pathetic little wee-wee of a hot dog. <laughs> like, like if he was a human, he better have a good personality. <laughs> and this hot dog didn't have any personality. Where were my toppings? The order form asked if I want yellow or brown mustard. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Good luck with that one. JK on the mustard question. That's funny. Good joke. <laughs> Anna, you didn't get any mustard. <laughs> I kept going through my other items and packaging, searching for it. Like when you hide your dog's ball behind your back and they just kind of run around waiting for it to reappear. And then despair turns into unaccountable anger. It's like when you really admire someone and then you meet them in person and they're a jackwad <laughs> with a small sausage. <laughs> I really want to call the Gordon Ramsay police on them and sit back with popcorn. What the fuck is this? Are you trying to kill me? What a joke. Throws hot dog across the room. Little limp sausages doesn't even make it to the cook's head. I like having vindictive thoughts when I'm hangry. It kind of makes me feel better. I mean, I mean, well, well written, Anna, but what are you doing? I don't know. But write some fucking short stories and fucking put them in a book. Right. What are you doing on Yelp? You got it. Working, <laughs> working out your fucking comedy bits. You got talent. You got talent, kid. You got talent, but maybe take it to an open mic, not the fucking Yelp comment section of Carney's Hot Dog. <laughs> right. What? I mean, nine people found it funny. <laughs> it is so, funny. There is an audience. It is funny. She's building. What if that's how some writers get started? They just like go to like review sec, like comment sections, and just see how many likes they get. Like that's how she's like building oh, wow. up her confidence. Uh -huh. oh, I, did, I mean, I had a pretty good week on Yelp last week. <laughs> didn't, didn't get double digits, Kim, but I was close. I got nine. <laughs> nine people thought it was helpful. Nine people found it funny. My likes are my likes are way up. Uh, I wrote a great Wendy's review last week. Right. I fucking killed it on uh, uh, Sonic's. Uh, you know, drive through. I wouldn't. I bet you that that could happen. I bet. I bet you we could. Yeah. So someone's like, I didn't think I was funny. And then I was just like being an asshole on Yelp. And here I am. Oh my God. So some like new comedy, like just takes the nation by storm. Mm -hmm. Fucking huge blockbuster. So how'd you get your start? Well, I, um, you know, I left a Yelp review, you know, <laughs> back in uh, 2009. And gosh, it was funny. And gosh, you know, got a lot of good feedback. <laughs> so for the next couple of years, <laughs> I just worked out, you know, my Yelp skills. Uh -huh. I, I, I closed down 15 of 16 businesses on Yelp <laughs> uh, with my, with my comedy. And that, that was enough. I've gotten 30 products removed from Amazon. <laughs> right. But look where I am today. Look where I am today. <laughs> hey, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> just uh, above all of it. Is that it? That's it. Okay. That's well, it. Well, that was very funny. Um, let's look at some good news. Okay, good news. Okay, let's do it with Sliver of Hope. Sliver of Hope. Okay, so this is just... Uh, <laughs> This is, I mean, I'd like to think that I would respond in a responsible way if this were to happen in real life, but I don't, I don't okay. know if I would. Okay. I think I would. A Colorado girl is being praised for leaping into motion when three kids fell into an icy pond over the weekend. Wow. Four juvenile, uh, a, or four, a four juvenile family ages four to 11 have been enjoying some time on a frozen pond in a suburb of Denver Sunday afternoon when three of them fell in the Oropaho County Sheriff's uh, workplace mentioned. A neighbor, 23-year-old Dusty Talavera, watched the horror unfold from her window. 
Earlier than I even realized, I used to be on the market in the course of the pond pulling two youngsters out. He mentioned throughout the Sunday press, uh, and this is after I fell in. So Talavera managed to drag out the four-year-old lady and the 11-year-old boy, I should say four-year-old girl, right. and 11-year-old boy from the water somehow struggled to rescue the third little one, the six-year-old lady, girl. <laughs> the girl's 16-year-old male cousin arrived and helped Talavera pull out, uh, pull him out of the water. She showed up, and the cousin threw rope into the water wow. and then dragged them all out. And there is video of uh, of the rescue, but they blurred everything out because it's a bunch of child their children, so they don't show like yeah. the faces and stuff. But I'd like to think. Wow. I mean, it's such a because I know how dangerous ice is, right? Like I wish I didn't, because then wow. I would probably be a little, little more uh, you know apt to go out and do that. But I know that it's that thin, oh. and you go out there, and if I weigh more than you. I'm go, fucking going in, yep, and we're all dead. Yep. Because I'm going to break all of the ice when I try to climb out. And you're it. all going to get hypothermia. <laughs> right. That's so dangerous. I know. So there's a part of me that I, I would hope that I guess traveled around with a with some rope mm-hmm. or an extension cord or something to pull people to safety. That's like the classic like quicksand th- move. Oh, well, yeah, right. right. Yeah, throw them a rope. They uh-huh. fucking pull themselves out of the quicksand. He did that with the icy lake. Mm-hmm. And I like that the author of that article uses the word lady instead of girl. I, I've never seen that before. Th- th- this must have been, I mean, I, I I swear to God, I read this over. There was one article that I was reading yeah. that had so many fucking ads, I just found a different article. Sure. And I read a little bit of it. But how funny, just like, I've just never seen that specific like switch. I know, I'm guessing it might be foreign. It's from theeverynews.com. Weird. Not great. Probably not. Yeah, probably whoever Grammar. whoever is doing that. Maybe like English. English is not their first language, or just like push translate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. That's a weird uh, mix there. Uh huh. Excuse me. Is your four year old lady home? Right. It, just, it, it immediately sounds creepy. It does. Like you're you're putting them way too high up. Like you have mm-hmm. you're expecting lady stuff from a four year old. Right. Right. <laughs> But would you, would you oh be able to do God. that? Would you jump into a lake if you saw? It? I think I would. Uh, I don't. I mean, man. Uh, I mean, in the moment, I guess I'd be like, "Fuck." I know. I'm gonna have to. But I would basically expect to die. Yeah. I'm like I'm probably gonna die. I would try everything else before I just ran out onto the lake. Here, here's what I was thinking. Okay, let's say there's some kids out there before they fall in. Okay. And I'm like, "Hey, hey, it's dangerous. Get, get off the, get off the ice. It's not safe. Not safe." And then if the kids are like, "Don't you? You know my dad." Uh-huh. And then after that, if they fall in. Then I walk away. You close the sliding glass door. I close the, I close the, back, the I, back patio. I, I close the sliding glass door. I turn up the volume and I just pretend it never happened. <laughs> just listen to Tool. Just listen to Tool. Crank it up. I take listen. some shrooms <laughs> and I tell myself it was all a dream. Listen to Person Sex. <laughs> just <laughs> crank it up and That's when I, let I, the kids I close die. the door. I call the police. I'm like, hey, there's some dead kids in the lake. <laughs> right. How do you know? Oh, they're not dead yet. They're going <laughs> ah, to be dead. By the time you get here. <laughs> right. I tried. How far out are you? I don't know. Five minutes. Yeah, know. they'll be dead. <laughs> At least three of them will be. <laughs> <laughs> they're asking, like, how far are you at? Ah, about 30, 40 feet. Right. I'm like, well, can you help them? No, fucking ISIS then, man. I told them not to. I mean, they're little. I told her to fucking get out of there. And they, they, they said I wasn't their dad. You know what? So I guess maybe right now they can fucking hope that their dad hears him. <laughs> what am I doing? Yell, yell him to safety? We yell <laughs> Bring a rope. What Bye. I, what am I going to You expect me to risk my life <laughs> for kids I don't even like. <laughs> Who I told not to go out there. <laughs> right. Officer's like, okay, I get it, sir. <laughs> I get it, sir. <laughs> Lesson Can't learned. you there. Lesson learned, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought that was amazing. So I was trying to put myself in that, uh, in that, in that position uh, because me and my kids were out on Lake Fernand just sliding oh, around on the ice. Did you check it out recently? No. Yeah. I mean, it's thick. Cut, it's like five, yeah. five, six inches thick. Like, we're not going to fall through. Kyler likes to, uh, wants to go out there. And every year, I'm just like, uh, like please just forget about it. Right. Like, I don't like it. it is, yeah, it's I it's safe. For, maybe not safe anymore, but it was safe three weeks ago. I see. I have to see a lot of footprints on that, mm-hmm. Be, and I like to. I'll only go if other people are already out there. You see people ice fishing already, mm-hmm. and I also kind of size them up. I'm like, is anybody as big as me out there? <laughs> I did that. Right there was a there was a tent out there, mm-hmm. so someone was ice oh, fishing ice in fishing. a tent. I was like, it has to be a man sized man. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Who's out right. there? Yep. I'm, I'm a man sized man too. Okay. So we're probably safe. Yep. The kids shouldn't fall through unless I do something stupid. Unless you body slam them. <laughs> right. Unless I push them through a fucking ice fishing <laughs> hole. That's the only way they're going in. <laughs> Which is tempting. Right? Sometimes. You know, <laughs> they're, they're fucking around with some. Don't listen. If you don't listen, I push you through the ice fishing hole. <laughs> I'm excited to show you the thing I found on the internet this week. It's super funny. Let's roll it. The internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek together as a couple to you from internet. All right. So this was sent in by Dummy Jake. And sure, I know. Mm. I know that... This, it's not real. Okay. Like, there's not an actual AI robot that has read all of these hundred or thousands of Batman comics and then came up with its own script. Okay. I don't fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking funny. So, uh, we're just going to read it. Okay. It says, Batman stands next to his Batmobile and uses his Bat computer. 
He's sometimes Bruce Wayne, sometimes Bruce Wayne, sometimes Batman, all times orphan. Batman, <laughs> this is now a safe city. I have punched a penguin into prison. Alfred, <laughs> Batman's loyal, loyal butler, carries a tray of goth ham. Alfred, eat a dinner, Mattress Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> An explosion explodes. The Joker and Two Face enter the cave. Joker is a clown but insane. Two Face is a man but attorney. Batman. No, it is Two Face and One Face. They hate me for being a bat. <laughs> Batman throws Alfred at Two Face. Two Face flips Alfred like a coin. Alfred lands heads up, which means Two Face goes home. <laughs> what? <laughs> Batman continued. Is it just me and I, the Joker? B bat versus clown? Moral enemies? The Joker, I am such a freak, society is bad. You drink water, I drink anarchy. Batman, I drink bats just like a bat would. Batman looks around for his parents, but they are still dead. This makes him have anger. He fires up a bat rocket. <laughs> the Joker deflects it with his sixth sense of humor. A clownly power. The Joker, I have never followed a rule. That is my rule. Do you follow? I don't. Batman, Alfred, give birth to Robin. Alfred begins the process since it is his job. The Joker now has a present in his hand. He juggles it over the Batman. The Batman. Happy birthday, Birthman. Or happy bat day, Birthman. Batman opens the present since he's a good guy. It contains a coupon for new parents, but it's expired. This is Joker joke. That was an AI <laughs> author? Claimed. Claimed, claimed that uh, an AI studied a bunch of uh, Batman comics I, I, and then wrote that script. I don't doubt it <laughs> right? because it, it does remind me of that thing that you showed me a long time ago. Right. With the, uh, the, the AI stand-up comedy routine mm -hmm. where it's like it's in the world. It's like using references, but it doesn't understand <laughs> how, anything works. how people talk like in those. Oh, that is very funny. Sometimes so Batman, all times orphan. That's sometimes. <laughs> I mean, tec uh, technically true. Absolutely true. Sometimes Batman always orphan. <laughs> always orphan. What a bummer, bro. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, sometimes Batman uh, always orphan. Always orphan. Tell you what. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jake, for sending that in. We're gonna yeah. read a couple pieces of junk mail now. Logan. <laughs> it's junk mail. That one. That one felt right. It I felt like I that was kind of how I want to scream Logan's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like I felt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. deep down in there. That's powerful. Yeah. Our first piece of junk mail coming in from Dummy Teresa who writes, Hey, Fred and Barney. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Freaking love your show. I'm listening to episode Mosh Pit, Shrapnel, Barbecue, and Rogue Grandma. And you're telling the story about the two grandmoms who broke into the water park and destroyed their feet and ankles after going down the slide and they hit the barrier. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And it reminded me of a story oh. when I was in my 20s. It's never God. good when you hear that story and you're yeah. like, reminds me of a story. <laughs> like, Let's see how this goes. And they had to wait for the fucking EMTs you're to show up. You're screaming for help for oh. hours, stuck in the tunnel. Oh, and their, their shins are fucking basically Just in their mashed. thighs. Oh, nightmare. I forgot about that. Uh -huh. Talk about nightmare. a compound fracture. Yep. Doesn't get any worse than that. <sighs> a few of us were getting drunk in our apartment complex. We decided to sneak into the pool hot tub area. Okay. So we take our glass tumblers with us, uh -oh. jumped over a seven foot metal fence without issues. We didn't want to stay too long. Uh, so, so we started to run out of beverages. We decided to hop back over and call it a night. My boyfriend at the time put his glass through the fence <laughs> as we were, uh, as we were going through. But this time when he hopped back over, he landed right on the no, glass that he just put through the no, fence, no, like no, no, no. right in the middle of his foot. Being very drunk, none of us could drive him to the hospital, oh, and he was bleeding a lot. So we oh called 911 and waited for the ambulance. His best friend went with him. I stayed home. Once the morning came, I heard a knock on the door. I go to the door, and it was the complex main office person. Fuck! Apparently, they knew it was us because, well, there was bloody footprints all the way from the pool fence oh, back to our apartment. Yep. Double fuck. We didn't get in trouble, but I did have to clean up the blood hung over his fuck. Anyway, love you dummies. Terry. Oh, Terry. Dude, that sounds so, so painful. I know, but the thing about oh. glass cuts, like sometimes you don't even know. Have you ever had... Oh, um man. I'm not sure. I don't know if I... My stomach I've, feels sick. If I've told this story, but um, when I remember I opened a door aggressively. I'm not sure if I was mad or being funny, but I kicked a door open in my fraternity. Yeah. And the door flung open, then smashed a mirror that was on the wall. Like a, like a, okay, like a standing okay, wall okay. mirror. And I was like, God yeah. damn it. So I was talking to my friend, picking up all the pieces. And then just blood starts. No. And then I, and then I went down like <gasps> this to pick up the trash can. Oh. And there was a piece of glass mm. that I didn't see. Yep, 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 yep. And it just went oh. between my fingers. Yeah. And it went, I didn't even feel it go in. I just went, it didn't oh. hurt. Oh, no. And he looks at me, he goes, what? And I just go and pull it out and hold it up. It goes, 
it's just blood. squirting blood out. I'm like, oh my god. He's like, how bad is it? I was like, I don't know. He goes, let go again. I go, like, fucking goddamn it. And we had like a big night of partying plan. Yeah. And so I had to go to the fucking hospital and get stitches in my hand. But that's the thing about glass. Like, sometimes you have no fucking idea. The blood yeah. tells you how bad it is. The pain does fucking nothing. But I bet jumping on a glass. I mean, but if you're hammered drunk. If you're hammered drunk, yeah. And like the callus on a, on a foot. Like, there's yeah. a chance that, it, I mean, it was bleeding a lot, but if. It didn't I, like hurt. I, I think it just bothers me because I have tender feet. <laughs> like I don't like foot massages. No. Oh. Like when you go to the mas massage place, Lindsay Get loves here. them. Uh -huh. She wants a foot. I'm like, you can stay away from my feet. It's fine. <laughs> just focus on my back. Move on. Spend just more stay time. My, spend, stay, stay on my back. Spend some more time somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Get, so, get, away, get away from my feet. <laughs> fuck. Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> she touched it. You kick her. <laughs> fuck off. Stop. I told you. Don't touch my feet. <laughs> I told you. Fuck calves. Don't touch my feet. Calves. Lowest. Uh. <laughs> Threatening <laughs> threaten to bite her and shit. Uh, yeah, but that's um, what a way to get caught. It's yeah. like, like um, I'm not even sure if it was on an episode that we released or it was one of the pilot episodes. We talked about those robbers that stole macaroni salad and got caught because they were coming out of the grocery store yeah, and, and they're it, eating it on the way. <laughs> and they, they left just followed the, the macaroni. A tray, a tray of macaroni salad back to the house. Like some fucking Hansel and Gretel uh, breadcrumbs. <laughs> uh, I, I think that was the pilot episode. I'm not sure if that even got oh, uh, released funny. ever. Okay, we're going to move on to our second piece of junk mail. Okay. This is coming in from Dummy Laura, who writes This morning. I tripped on my husband's shoes that were right in the middle of the floor. Oh, you didn't check for shoes. Mm-hmm. He said, not my fault. I said, yeah, it is. They're your shoes. He yeah. looks me dead in the eye, says, well, did you check for shoes? I said, no. Mm. He goes, that'll be five bucks. Yep. Nice. Uh, he about he got gets a shoe it. upside the head. <laughs> Dummy lore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that, too. <laughs> right? nah, fucking your fault. Yeah, it's fucking your fault. You didn't check well, for shoes. What are you going to do? My kids have said that. I've tripped over um, Ezra's boots. Mm -hmm. Coming in the back door and he goes, check for shoes. <laughs> that like, is awesome. You. Like just using your own powers against you. I'm sure you have examples of that. I, uh, the check for shoes. Uh, I thought of check for shoes down in La Jolla. Not that crazy tool night, but another, oh, night, dude. another night when Lindsay What if there. that was the nightmare of the trip? Oh no. Like, no one's checking for no fucking checking shoes for in this tool concert. Your shoes aren't on. <laughs> right? I'm like, no, I, I do. I, I know they're on. Every Sorry, single, single person that's sitting around you. You no can show up for like, shoes. You should check for shoes. Like, fuck it. <laughs> that's the creepiest. Just, oh my God. Out your of your eyes mind. are this big. Yep, your my, eyes are the size of like. all pupil. My eyes are all pupil. Did you check for shoes? Did you check for shoes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing fucking kaleidoscope two, colors. Two you phrases. Two phrases. You check for shoes, then you going to sleep soon? You going to sleep Wait, soon? You going to bed soon? You going to bed soon? <laughs> yeah, check for shoes. <laughs> oh my God. How have quickly good, would I get arrested? <laughs> you going to bed soon? <laughs> and check for shoes. Have a good night. <laughs> That's all. I <laughs> Those are the three phrases you've got uh, in a hell of a fucking shroom trip. But uh, but I did uh, a couple <laughs> nights a couple nights later walking from the comedy club back to the hotel. Uh -huh. There was uh, so just like a quiet little side trip. But there was like some fancy little like uh, movie theater where you'd have dinner, drinks as you watch a movie. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a chain I hadn't heard of. But right there in La Jolla. But there was it had like a little outdoor patio bar. And as we were walking back, like run, uh, uh, heading past on the sidewalk, one shoe was on the sidewalk, <laughs> and then the other shoe to that pair was like starting to go up the wall. Like it looked like somebody had sprinted across the street, <laughs> and as they jumped up into the patio, they they like ran out of their shoes. <laughs> right. But like they were like they were positioned so it looked like where they'd be like in a stride. Sure. It was <laughs> so <laughs> weird. I'm like, what fucking happened here? Right. Were you Where'd running you that go? fast, right. and then you just literally ran out of your shoes and didn't come back for them? And they just like stuck to the ground in perfect formation yeah like oh, the perfect fun. spacing that's fun that is fun uh well that's our show that was a fun 70, show 79 fucking whatever number that means to you yeah your most life. important number hopefully it's fucking important to you because we don't know what it means exactly uh logan key thanks buddy producing and directing you got it <laughs> you got it. thank you yeah thank you sir uh zach cohen creating some of the custom music beds for the show if you want to follow us on our socials just go to facebook or instagram and look up is we dumb and if you want to join the private Facebook group, Is We Dummies, search for that on Facebook. Thanks to Liz Hernandez and the All Seeing Eyes for moderating that. Uh, Logan Keith pumping out all the, all the merch for all yes, the shows. Yes, yes, yes. He's so good at it. He's a good merch he's got He's got a computer. Yeah. He's got keyboards. He also has hands in a, in a bigger computer. Uh -huh. And it seems like he, he knows what he's doing. He's a merch pump. He's, he's a merch pump. He pumps and pumps. <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks again, Logan. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all the video versions of our shows at Bad Magic Productions on YouTube. And if there's something you want to see on the show, you can email that in to dumb at iswedumb.com. And if you have a general question uh, about, I, I don't know, fucking whatever you want. About Logan and mm -hmm. his merch pump. Mm -hmm. Info at iswedumb.com. That's where you send that. Then rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcast. And a reminder, you can now review us on Spotify, given that you actually, in fact, listen to our show. Oh, yeah. Because they make sure that you uh, you listen to the show before. Mm -hmm. Which That's I right. think is smart. I keep forgetting about Spotify ratings. Yeah. Fuck. 
How, how could you? Oh, fucking everyone has a rating. Set. I know. I mean, right now as we release this, a bunch of Spotify shit going on, isn't there? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Good Neil luck, Young. everybody involved. Uh, oh God, what the hell is her name? Joni Mitchell. People pulling their catalogs off. Mm-hmm. People mad about. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I, I feel like I caught a headline that James Blunt. Oh, right? and beautiful. Yeah, he he beautiful. threatened to put it on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> that's like an Onion headline. Yeah. James Blunt threatens to put catalog back on Spotify. Right, in protest of Joe Rogan. No! <laughs> I believe that. You're beautiful. I'm, I'm not sure if that's real or not, but I want to believe that it is. <laughs> uh, okay, I've got a dad joke to wrap up this show. Let's do it. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Wow, meet dad joke. Sent in by dummy Zach. Okay, a lot of Zachs. Yeah. So today, I saw a dwarf climbing down a prison wall. I thought to myself... Oh, man, that's a little con descending. You get it? I got it. <laughs> like a little, you know. I got it. It's convict. Oh, boy. And he's going down. Oh, jeez. And he's small. Oh, gosh dang. All right. <laughs> See you guys next week. Fuck yeah! This week, go! Productions.